Hi, Eddie here again, and in this short video of five videos, going to tell you about preparing to go afloat, getting ready to go and enjoy being afloat. So who is coming with us and their capabilities? If um, Auntie Nora and some of your young nephews and nieces are coming, uh, you're going to limit yourself. But if it's some of your buddies who did the power go course with you two years ago and you've been power boating ever since, as they have, your limitations are very different and the capabilities are very different. It's the law that we have a plan and I'm going to explain about that in a minute. And we must share that plan with somebody ashore. Um, part of the plan obviously is where are we going? And we can't decide that until we see what the conditions are, what the wind, the tide and the location do for us. When are we going? That depends on lots of factors. Uh, the tides, the forecast, or possibly personal factors as well. Why are we going? It's pointless going water skiing if you don't bring the water skis. And it's a very disappointing day out going fishing if you forget the fishing rods. So why are we doing it? And which boat are we going in? Uh, our boat must be kitted and she must be right before going to sea. So here's the law side of it. Solas, safety of life at sea. And I'm going to go through that with you now. So the weather, as you've already said, we need to know the weather for our departure, our en route and our arrival. And then the limits with respect to the boat, the crew and the area due to the weather. The tides, um, the heights of the tide at the starting point, finishing point and any shallow bits en route and tidal streams where the tide is strong or where you might have a situation of wind against tide creating a bumpy bit. And then looking at the chart to see where those areas might be. The capability of the boat, is she suitable for the route in the sailing area? What condition is she in? Has the maintenance done and have the repairs been done? What navigation equipment do we have? What safety equipment do we have, including the VHF? Have we got our kill card? Have we got spare fuel and maybe water, food if we're going for a long time, first aid kit and all that? So that's very, very important. I mentioned crew there, but the capability of the crew, are they crew or passengers? If they're crew, it's great. If they're passengers, you need to take more care. We must uh, welcome people on board. If they're new to boating, explain to them where to sit, make sure that they have the right kit, that they have sunscreen, life jacket, which is fitted properly. And who's going to take over if you're incapacitated as skipper? So the plan for the trip is in the context of the final combined capability of the group. Hazards en route, fixed hazards such as rocks, sandbanks and so forth. Shipping is a big hazard in Cork Harbour. We need to be aware of all of this. And again, with the shipping side of it, uh, marine traffic is an app that you should download. Marine traffic. And that will show you where the ships are. And if you go to the Sail Cork website, uh, we have... Um, a tab called resources. And if you go into resources, it'll give you shipping traffic for Cork or Waterford or Dublin. And I would log on to that. <clears throat> so a hazard is the visibility. If you're at night, it's very, very different than daytime. So you should have a proper passage plan. Use charts, publications, and the publication that I've given you this evening is eoceanic.com. Charts are Navionics. And if you have a plotter, program in your route in advance of the voyage. Have you got backup electronic navigation? And I'm looking for that here busily. And I'm reaching one way and I find this and I'm reaching the other way 
and I'm finding this. So there my backup electronic navigation. Uh, I pay to download my Navionics charts and I can share it onto my iPad and it's very readable from the iPad. This guy is just a backup. The Irish charts, if you want to get the Navionics charts for your iPhone or iPad or for an Android, um, you log on to Navionics. And the Irish charts, the chart to get is the UK and Holland, including Ireland. And that will cost about 50 bucks, but it's well worth having. Um, pilotage plans. If you're in a complicated area for the first time, it's really important that you make a plan for getting out of that place. Another part of the rules according to Solus is, as you've rightly said, is leaving information ashore. So let somebody or plan, but safe tracks is a great way of doing it. VHF is the primary source, of course, of communication afloat and we can lodge a Tango Romeo, a TR with the Coast Guard. If ever I'm going outside the harbour I will always lodge a plan with the Coast Guard uh, even if I'm just going to Roberts Cove or to Powerhead but certainly if I'm going further than that I will always lodge uh, a Tango Romeo, a traffic routing report and again your instructors will talk about that. And of course, we need to have plan B. We need a contingency plan. And we need it if the weather changes, if somebody gets unwell, if equipment fails, if there's a collision, if we go aground, ports of refuge, there must be a backup plan. There must be another plan in the stock of the kiln. Right, so the first thing you mentioned about knowing about before going a float was the weather. So I will constantly watch the TV forecast absolutely every day. And if you're going afloat in your boat, I would advise looking at the forecast a couple of days in advance and watch it as time goes on. Uh, the radio, you've got a good forecast at six o'clock in the morning, at five to eight in the morning. Unfortunately, there's none at five to midday anymore but you've one in the evening and then one late at night. A newspaper isn't too bad, but the information can be slightly out of date. You can maintain a listening watch on channel 16 and you will get a, a forecast from that. Uh, by listening to that, they will direct you to your own local channel. And what you might write down is the VHF forecast goes out at 0103 and every three hours thereafter. 0103, 0403, 703, 1003, and so on and so forth. So that's the sea area forecast. The more time you spend in the water, the more you learn to observe uh, the weather forecast, but never go to sea without getting a proper forecast. Um, there's a very good video forecast from BBC television. So I'll, I'll put a link up on our page. It's not up there yet. But what you do is Google BBC weather video and you'll get an up to date. Log on to Sail Cork Facebook page um, as well as our web page. Our web page has loads of different sources of weather information. Um, but our Facebook page will give you an up-to-date weather forecast. We issue it between 9 and 11 in, in the morning. In the summertime, it's always earlier than that. Um, but I will give a very good uh, overview for the Cork area. So we get the weather forecast, but we also need to know then about the tides. And if we are knowing about the tides, well, we need to know how the hell do they happen? So the tides are caused by the gravitational pull of the moon and the sun on the Earth's surface. And when we have a new moon or a full moon, the pull is in line, so we have very big tides. So I'm sure if you look up in the sky now, you'll see that moon up there. And as it gets darker, 
he'll shine more brightly. But he's close on being a full moon. So the tides are very, very big. And in the Cork Harbour area, high water is about 4.3 metres and low water is about 0.3 of a metre, meaning that there's a range of four metres there, four metres between high water and low water. So these tides are called spring tides. They're big tides. On the other hand, in two weeks' time, we live neap tides when we can see a half moon up there. The moon is in its first and last quarter. The sun is at right angles to the moon, so the gravitational pull isn't as big. The tide doesn't come in as far or go out as far, so you don't have as big a range. And in the Cork Harbour area, the range is only about two metres, which is half the range of the spring tide. So the tide takes six hours to go out, six hours to come in, whether it's springs or neaps. So there's a much greater volume of water to go in and out at springs. So therefore, you have a stronger tide at spring tides. There are other effects on the tide and the air pressure being one. If we have high pressure like we had for the last number of days and today, it pushes the tide out and the low tide will be lower. But if we have low pressure, it allows the tides to come in further. If we have an onshore breeze for a number of days, it's a higher high water and a higher low water. If we have an offshore breeze, it pushes the tide out and gives a lower low tide. So if we have rain in a river estuary combined with an onshore wind, combined with a low pressure and spring tides, that's going to give us the biggest tide of the year. And that's when we get floods in areas. There's always more than just the spring tides. So a spring tide, low pressure, onshore wind and rain in an estuary. That's what gives us the very, very high, high tides. OK, so armed with a basic knowledge of meteorology and again, ask the instructors and tear the forecast apart and put it back together again when you're afloat with us. But do prepare yourself before coming and have plenty of layers on. And nylon kit is always best because it synthetic material dries quicker than cotton or wool material. Natural materials take longer time to dry. And layers um, do provide better protection. So thermal tops are a very good idea. Uh, the proper type of shoes or boots that have a proper grip are really important if we're going to see. And then over that, a decent set of um, oilies, as we might have called them in the past, um, but waterproofs and marine type waterproofs are really the best with a chest high trousers. Um, you know, quite often you can end up taking your jacket off, but those little splashes will get you if you don't have a chest high trousers. So very good idea to have those. And of course, a life jacket. And again, we'll be checking the life jackets before you go afloat. Now that you've learned from the video, we have some questions for you. So you will have to answer a number of questions on the video here.